War gets easier when you commit to death. Evan Hafer, a former Green Beret, founded this company seven years ago. Four years ago, you were already talking about this incredible growth story right. in Black Rifle Coffee. Now you're gonna go public. Business gets easier when you commit to everything short of death to success. The pouches that are in my shadow box behind my desk, I was sold everything. So these tactical pouches that I collected over the course of you know, decades of service, like these things were owned by me. I was selling them on eBay and just dumping all my kit because I was trying to fund the growth of the company. And I have a few left. Put them in a shadow box and I put them up as a reminder that you always have more shit to sell. <laughs> you can always give more. And if you stop short, you're gonna regret it. Once I realized that, I was like, oh, I'll be all right. Yeah, I'll succeed. I, I got it. I would literally like you to tell us the story of Black Rifle Coffee. Just from the entire to story. Yeah, take like beginning 10 to and end. I want you to run through the history of Black Rifle Coffee okay. according to Evan Hafer. According to Evan Hafer. Yeah. Okay. I knew coffee was something that I had to do. I knew it. I wanted to do it. I didn't know about what, what the future would yield as far as Black Rifle is concerned, but I knew eventually I would get there. So I just kind of shelved it, and the wars kicked off, but I still had a, a passion and a desire to have really great coffee. One of my buddies that I was in Suleimani, Iraq with back in the day, he was talking about buying this coffee roaster. It was a little one pound fluid bed coffee roaster. I was like, fuck man, you can buy a coffee roaster? It just clicked. So Evan Hafer and myself met in Kabul, Afghanistan in 2010. We were both contractors for the CIA at the time and one morning I was walking into the dining facility with my little uh, AeroPress that I would travel with to kind of make coffee with and I saw another guy standing in line with his, uh, had a giant stainless steel French press so I was kind of, kind of locked eyes with him and uh, we started talking about coffee and kind of just hit it off. I was contracting overseas and then people started talking about this guy, Evan Hafer. Um, we had mutual friends in that community that were like, you guys have the same type of personality and humor and he's got some business stuff in the works. You guys should link up and hang out. I said, fuck it, okay, might as well meet people. The funny thing is back in when I was an SF guy, People would make fun of me all the time, like, you hipster douchebag, what are you doing? If we worked together, I would have made fun of you a lot. Yeah. You're like, sweet, 30 minutes to make a cup of coffee? What yeah. are you fucking doing? What are you doing? Well, that's why it's a funny contrast yeah. between this badass special forces guy and someone who's like really meticulous with their coffee. I ordered this Lamarzocco, I think it was Alenia 4, which is a four group Italian espresso machine from Italy and had it installed in northern Iraq at a, at, a, at a base up there. And I was in this fob and I'm sitting there, I'm like, why the fuck is there this like $50,000 espresso machine for a very small base in the middle of nowhere? Well, come to find three years later, I'm chatting with Evan, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, dude, I don't know, the agency bought some stupid ass espresso. He's like, yep, yep, that was me. I could put, so he convinced <laughs> the supplier, or NCO or whoever, to officer to buy this super intricate freaking espresso machine uh, in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, of course it was you. Like, but it was, it was awesome. Cause we could make great coffee. I'm like, there you go, buddy. You're welcome, taxpayer. There's a large demographic that enjoy our shirts, but let's be real, mostly manly men that like to break things. <laughs> America. Back in the day, it was interesting. Article 15 was doing very well at the time, and we were on a pretty good publishing cycle. And as most know, with with the the history of Article 15, the videos were a staple. The MS11X videos were 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 such a new, fresh 
angle to the military veteran community. And it was in the beginning of, of 2013, an email comes in to Matt from a guy named Evan Hafer. I knew I had the opportunity to emancipate myself from government service because I was fucking miserable. And I knew I wanted to do something in coffee. And I knew if I didn't capitalize on this now, then it would pass me by and then the chances of this ever happening would be would be gone. Hey guys, you guys want to jump on our single speeds and ride down to the park? Have you been drinking hipster bucks? Yeah, it's actually pretty good. Play stupid games and win stupid prizes. You know, Evan had flown out to us. He, he hung out with us, he watched us film a video, then he jumped in a video and, and he, he contributed with ideas. It was a riot. <laughs> Evan seemed to always go back to coffee. You could tell he didn't know how to do it yet, but he wanted to do it. That's what he loved, that's what he was passionate about. But we were all a little bit uneasy about the, the, the kind of hipster culture associated with coffee, because we are like, this isn't us. You know, we carry rifles for a living, and the, the white tile and skinny jeans and, you know, Che Guevara crowd is just, that's not our thing. But we're really into specialty micro lock coffees. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna point this up in a semi-safe direction. Easy. And press. <laughs> On the back tailgate of a government truck, I had this one pound coffee roaster, and I had my service rifle that I laid down on the tailgate right next to it, and we were kind of making jokes about, oh, Black Rifle Coffee Company. It was like, kind of funny. This will piss people off. <laughs> Evan calls one morning, he's like, hey, I'm gonna push forward on a coffee, on a, on, on a coffee brand. You in? I'm like, I'm in. Like, of course, anything that you're saying. So he's sending me back the artwork of, of the initial designs. He's like, what do you think, Black Rifle Coffee Black Rifle. Company? And I, I remember, like, dude, that's a cool logo. He sent me the, the Target logo first, BRCC. It's weird to think back to that moment when BRCC wasn't, wasn't an acronym that I've heard a billion times. It was brand new. He had this concept that was so original and, and so wild it, 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 it was like, well, yeah, let's see what happens. You know how many times you hear that you're crazy when you're starting a company like this? Doing? Everybody. Side effects may include. They're all contrarians. They're all like, yeah, I don't think it would work because the name. You know how many times I've heard that? 10,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, I don't fucking know. I'm like, yeah, but I like the name. You know why? Because I like Black Rifle, I think it's cool. And it's part of my heritage, it's like life-saving equipment that I carried for decades. How much love you have for this inanimate object that is attached to you all the time. And you can see the wear marks. It's so special, it means more than anything else on my kit. I don't give a fuck about my helmet. Is it cool? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Take it off, throw it in the fucking trash. Who cares? I don't, I'll get a new one. But your rifle, there's something about it that's like, man, it's my rifle. Like it's, it's, it's emotional. Evan is one of those people that, that found the diamond that, that very few find where there was this massive market gap where coffee was a thing for hipsters and, and, and this side. And, and no one ever paid attention to it, yet lives off of it. On the military veteran, blue collar, like actual like worker side of the country, like no one ever made a brand for them. Cameras are rolling. Oh, that's spicy. Business is like being pregnant. Everybody says congratulations, they just don't know how many times you got fucked to get there. What an incredible year it's been at Black Rifle Coffee. 
And it's all thanks to you guys, our coffee-loving fans. First couple years were so thin, like so slim. I didn't know if it was gonna make it. The business was so poor back then that like it was just like asking buddies for help and and just doing whatever you had to do to get by, which I was like, I was so okay with that. Coming from the Marine Corps, like we're the poor stepchild that doesn't get shit for funds and you know we got to make do with what we have. I don't care what any of those guys say if they all like agreed that this was going to be the next big thing they're full of shit because everyone had so many lines in the water but it was one of those things that was, was definitely different and for us I think the thing that stood out was the enthusiasm and the mission uh, where we actually had a soul. They were a very diverse group of people going from these guys who I knew were incredible warfighters to thriving into this business, but also like right. doing a lot of the business. I'm gonna pick the boot campaign today, Evan. Okay, that's, right. that's what I'm going with. Who you got? Uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And I'm actually just gonna stack everything on my side. I pick Ryan and Logan. Um, hot, hot dudes all the way around. That's, I like that's your team, by the way. Like when I hung out with him, I just saw this little spark of like, oh, this is what life could be like to thrive in a situation in which you're doing something unique with other dudes who are like you. And finding a new tribe, it was like the light bulb went on, the good idea fairy all happened all at once and it was something that I knew I immediately wanted to be a part of. We even started our own magazine called Coffee or Die. I'm reporting on assignment here in Istanbul, Turkey. I am here in Kabul, Afghanistan. I'm out here with a Special Forces ODA in the Momond Valley. You know, the history of Black Rifle Coffee is, you know, kind of this Avengers Assemble moment. I think when I really was all in on, the, on Evan's vision and Black Rifle and everything that they were trying to accomplish. And we got into this, it was like an hour, hour and a half long conversation. And he talked about all these grandiose ideas and things about like building business and achieving at like, you're not gonna change anything in this world unless you do something to shake it up. We had you know, Matt, Jared, myself, Logan, we had all these guys in the company at that point, but we were distracted because we were working on other projects. So I needed to consolidate everybody, focus their energy on this project, and then we needed to start building. That's what we did. You heard him! Fire for him! I was in Costa Rica when the meme heard around the world dropped. Uh, I was down there with Edwin and we were sourcing coffee. And I'm sitting in Costa Rica and I remember opening my phone and I see the Starbucks meme. And I just, I got the sense that after the reaction with that, I was like, I, everything has changed. I, and I knew everything was different from that moment. I think it was interesting because there's been um, specific evolutions of the brand and I think early on, you know, it's interesting to hear this kind of public narrative of, they give us too much credit, let me put it that way, is where they think, a lot, I've heard people say that we specifically came out and saw this like niche market and we pandered to it and we like, no, we're a bunch of former like soft gun guys that love America that just started making gun content because we had cool toys and then people started watching it. and. That's, I think, where the first part of Black Rifle Coffee as the brand took off was really in the Second Amendment community, the 2A. And then I think as the business started to mature, we realized that there was this, you know, ecosystem that we could create that's far larger than these kind of silly commercials. And I started to look at it introspectively of like, what, what do I want to like hang my hat on in a couple years? And for me, it was the military and veteran community. 
It was, you know, there was a bit of a controversy and we decided to do a play on that and immediately it caught fire through the internet, caught waves with our competitors and, you know, what, how many people can say they put a meme online one day and their boss is on Fox News like three days later explaining why exactly you put that on. All right, well you remember guys, when Starbucks pledged to the... Here, Evan, thank you. To hire 10,000 refugees to fight against the president's immigration order? We did hear that news. Well, our next guest, who we just clinked cups with, had the perfect response. He's an Army Special Forces vet and has a coffee company of his own, and he is going to hire 10,000 veterans. Joining us right now is the CEO of Black Rifle Coffee Company. I, I have been reading this uh, book, Build to Last. They're talking about every company needs big, hairy, audacious goals. And I was like, Let's put one on the board. Tire 10,000 vets. Yes, like at first it was a quick jab of just showing how skewed the priorities were for a, a, such a big United States, American owned company, like how, how just off their priorities were. But then when Evan started kind of breaking this down, it made sense and it was like, wait, we could do this. Just think about the fucking balls to say, I'm gonna hire 10,000 veterans. And sure, was it a joke? Maybe. Maybe it was. But why not? Why not do that thing? As I'm sure you've heard, here at Black Rifle, we are on a mission to hire 10,000 veterans. And your resume came in very, very strong. And we wanted to see where you think you fit in the Black Rifle family. Mm. So when Evan threw down that challenge, he literally called me up that afternoon and said, how are we going to do that? said, well, I think you've got about 200 employees, half of whom are veterans today, so you're at 100. <laughs> Only 9,000 plus to go. But it was clear to both of us then we needed to build coffee shops. The bitter store opening was for sure one of the craziest things. I remember Evan saying years ago, like, yeah, we're gonna have shops, we're gonna have this, we're gonna take over the world. I'm like, okay, bud. And then to like stand there and see the shop and like see the community and the people come in, like just, I was just standing there, like arms crossed, just staring at it. I was like, Evan Water, he's like pretty crazy. I was like, dude, I thought you were full of shit. I will tell you that I remember thinking these are my people. And I think we are making a difference for a lot of people, veterans and active military who have come to Black Rifle Coffee Company because transitioning especially if you were lifelong military, it can be very difficult. At the end of the day, I'm just being me. I push forward and share my story and use what happened to me to help others. I flew F-15E Strike Eagles. I was responsible for putting warheads on foreheads. Every single person that I met, every interaction, the mission was at the core of what people were doing. There are great people everywhere. There are people that care and want to make a commitment. When you can align that and point it all in the same direction, it's like a superpower. The dent in the universe is that we will become the most veteran-centric business in America. And we're going to be establishing the template for future businesses and how they, they speak to uh, and curate their entire business ecosystems around the veteran community. We've got to lead at least a portion of the American business community to doing what I feel is, you know, um, our obligation to the veteran community. Who's got the harder job, HR or not, or HR? Okay, hands down, and I would bet condoms to K-cups, I have the harder job. Let me tell you why. Because the adult film industry is regulated by legislation. I have the wild, 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 wild west here, oh. right? And um, our ringleader is Evan Hafer. Have you met him? Controversy, you know, I look at everybody as in the context of they've all been in some form of controversy because there's always a section of the internet that doesn't believe or it doesn't, doesn't believe like you or doesn't think like you. Because there are, there are people out there just they're, they're trying to take us down because we're a threat uh, and, and they're relying on the reactivity of people on social media to do that and bots. Um, and man, if you've never argued with a bot online, 
you got to do it at least once just to check the block. But uh, it's it's really that that ability to to talk to people and, uh, and and have an ear, but also be an ambassador at the same time. And I think that's the biggest TTP that uh, that we bring in from the soft community. The rewarding side of all the controversies that we've had is just seeing the team come together. We have the best retail and the best customer service team members in the world and watching them really bond together and support each other through all of the controversies that have happened has been super rewarding for me as a HR professional. You, you have to go out, you, you, you set your goals and objectives and you accomplish them and you don't let anybody or anything get in the way of mission completion. You don't let anything happen. You put in your team, you align your goals and objectives, and you go out and you accomplish it. That's what you do. So if going public is a thing, then we got to do it. And when we decided we were going to do it, I was like, great, then nothing, nothing is going to deter us from doing this. This is what we're going to do. This was never a small idea. It's always been a big idea, and it will continue to be a big idea. And Evan, based on what his previous experience was, constantly cannot help but think big. We put out the 10,000 four years ago. I thought it would take me six years, I think. Uh, I, I'm gonna be close. I, I'm gonna be close when I say I think I'm gonna be close. I think I'm gonna miss it by maybe a year or two. But based on the growth of RTD and the coffee shops alone, I'll, I'll be with it a couple years. And now as we go public, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that we go public, that's why we're going public. Which is like, hey, I'm meeting and exceeding my obligation. I made a promise. I'm tracking to fulfill that promise. Like you have to have goals and objectives and that's why we're doing it. I don't think anybody's gonna challenge us to be America's coffee. If you're gonna say that you're America's coffee. It's about promise. It's about being able to do whatever your dream is and, and bringing that to fruition and manifesting it. You love the constitution and freedom and, and, and how much has been sacrificed for both of those things in this country. But it's also about hard work and being dedicated to something, being dedicated to something bigger than yourself. Protecting, serving, supporting those who do those things for us and just being a coffee company that is for everybody. It means to be a thing by which anyone and everyone can congregate. Anyone from any background can sit down in one of our shops and, and drink coffee. I don't know if people realize about the military, it's the most diverse community and situation you will be ever be in, but you're all in it for the same mission. You're looking out for buddies left and right of you. We have different cultures, we have different belief systems, but everybody that supports America and supports that belief of independence and what made America great can opt in to supporting the things that we do here at Black Rifle, which is all about. I'm extremely proud to be an American. I'm the granddaughter of Finnish immigrants. I am literally the product of the American dream. And so to be able to serve my country and give back when this country has given my family so much is extremely impactful. We're using all the gifts that America has given us and we're doing that and we're representing a, a true capitalist endeavor that reinvests constantly in its community. And its people. I think that's been probably the coolest thing about this place where you can take a bunch of people from hugely varied backgrounds like dirt bags and you know green berets and like corporate people and all come together and be like yes we're coming together to build a really cool company around good coffee and do good things. We love our freedom, we love our individuality, we love to give to others and not to get all Toby Keith but we love to fly that flag. Like that to me is America's coffee. It's fucking powerful.